decent supports either. I mean, oh, of course not. But fantastic supports in the entire game. The ones that like stood out to me when I when I read that question, mm. just because at least I thought back to Frankfurt from the defensive meta. You know, yeah. I was just, those two had like, the, the plays that they did were so split second with the way that they saved each other. It was like, wow, it's like, oh my god. All right, we're into draft number three. It is underway, and. Uh, Let's see the DP first ban. The invoker's gone again. Do they ban life stealer? Yeah, yeah. Life like stealer goes. Okay, so, so we're, we're, we're pretty much exactly in the meta right now. Yeah. Okay. And we'll the start of the Like we were saying, OG, I said last draft, OG should just keep banning the life stealer. They're doing it. Yeah. One last game. They're like, okay, this works. Let's keep it. Let's keep at it. Paul, do you know who picked what? Like side or uh, first I can pick find was... that out. Yeah. Yeah. As we go through the draft, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, not Same exact on picks. Uh, did they pick Void third last game? No. Oh, yeah, they yeah, did. Yes, they, they went. They went. They went. Sorry, they did. Yes. Earth Spirit. They went Earth Spirit. Second pick. Okay, so OG took Dyer. Okay. Liquid okay, so, so they did have choice, and it's very yeah. interesting now that they didn't. They value Dyer now more than first pick. Before this series, though, I know they value Radiant and first pick more. Maybe they think that Liquid favors Dyer a lot more just because of how heavily they've been. Uh, or they're just on seeing the that Dyer wins the vast majority of yeah. of these series. Dyer has a pretty high win rate, and then. Like they, like you were talking about, you know, they pick these two massive team fight heroes around the Roche pit can be very, very devastating. And yeah. now, Liquid gets the Jerax Earth Spirit, and the two fit together so well. It helps them in laning because they can do off lane or safe lane. They can be unpredictable like last game. Yeah. And if they Chronosphere two or three heroes and they Phoenix Egg behind that, they're set. If they Phoenix Egg on a cliff near Roche, it's hugely adv advantageous to them. They can Sunray over it. There's so many ways that they can stop Liquid from trying to steal that. But this yeah. time. OG doesn't have the Earth Spirit to really bolster their lanes and set up those ganks. This is super smart by Liquid. I think they absolutely need to take the Earth Spirit So here. do you think that Liquid will ban out the Tusk then, since that's probably one of the other ones that Jarex uses and enables? Or do you think maybe do you they'll mean, go for like... You mean OG ban? OG? Oh, OG, sorry. Yeah, well, no, I mean, Jarex is going to play the Earth Spirit, so... OG will not ban out the Tusk. I oh, like... I, I meant Crit, I'm sorry. Yeah, Crit used to play the Tusk a lot, though. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, yeah. I feel like maybe they might ban that out, but looks like they're not really opting for it. I think Jarek's been a while. one of the like the few players that still plays it. I don't, I don't think I've seen Crit play it that much. It's been quite a while. Recently. I don't yeah. think it's a very good Tusk game against uh, Phoenix Void. They both have mobility skills. Um, it could work against Liquid, I suppose, but... Yeah, I mean, we're talking about it for crit. It, it, yeah. it could, it, slave, it saves the hero through, you know, Slardar Crush or an Earth Spirit initiation. I don't think they really need that. Um, yeah, that's fair it's, it's not good with Chronosphere. I, I just yeah. don't see it being useful okay. in that way. Five seconds so I will band out in the second phase. Uh, Alchemist out of the pool as well. So Invoker is, nope, Invoker's gone. And interestingly, they keep banning out Magnus in the second mm. round. That one's yeah. a bit, bit interesting. Very worried about it. It would appear. But they're well, yeah, they're it, scared about the empower combo on melees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one time they picked it, it did enable both mirror, both uh, sorry, no tail and moon to just accelerate their farm to insane rates. Yeah, and after since OG just you know they just used the void short lane, they don't want to they don't want to leave any options for those another massive team fight ultimate as well with a physical carry with yeah. a physical melee carry. Well, they do pick up their line. Hopefully, they they hope that Crit can channel his inner Tron. Yep, pretty standard safe pick. Just helps a lot in the laning phase, and yeah, like we we're saying, it's another form of initiation, which is winning a lot of these games. You know, the team that gets the initiate gets the jump first tends well, to win yeah, those matchups. It's, it's also not just the team that gets the jump first; it's also the team that can counter initiate. Counter initiate as well. You see, we saw it in both series or both games so far is that. Um, when Liquid won the first series, they had no way to initiate, but OG had no way to counter-initiate or save anybody, and vice versa in the second series, it's just, you know, all-out aggression and no way to sort of stop the aggression or save key heroes. Mm -hmm. So where does Fada go here? Because, as was the case last game, his, uh, a bunch of his top heroes kind of got moved out, he was forced on the Dragonite roll, they can still do uh, a Darkseer like they did last game to make things a little hard for them. So this, the Venge pick, not seeing it too much, but it's very specific, you know, versus the Void, Chronosphere, very good, pull people out of, like, bail them out of terrible, bad scenarios where they're in a, in a disadvantageous position. Same thing, you can't really, if Lion's focusing on someone to burst them down, the Venge can also swap, save him. And it also you know, works really well with Slardar, more amplified physical damage while their spirit applies to more of that AoE magical. Some blend in there, some diversity in their draft. 
There's still a Batrider in the game as well. Yeah, last game they it was banned out the fifth pick. Yeah. And now they got Avenge, so slightly unlikely they pick mm -hmm. him. Yeah, you, if OG took Batrider, then Avenge would be good against two of your heroes. Yeah, and I think Moon's actually been almost, ex I don't know if it's ex not exclusively playing the Void, but most of the time, and Notel played it, of course, the last game, but they do tend to favor it on him, like we were saying previously. This gives them a slight advantage in the in the draft when they've got flexible players that can yeah. flick around and play different heroes in different ways. Yeah, that's the one thing that Liquid does reveal a lot. They revealed a lot of things right here. They revealed that my control has been playing the slaughter pretty much, I think, every single game, I want to say. Every single game, they have their two supports already. So now they already know, you know, Liquid is going to pick picking up their short laner and Fata's hero. So where do they go? Pick four. They don't know who the enemy mid is yet. So it's a little... And they can still solidify their other lanes as well if they change it up. And they have last pick. Hmm. It's a nice advantage here. Lots of different heroes still left. There's the Darks here, which you saw previously. It gives them a lot more team fight. But maybe they're going to be a little bit too cool down the line if they do go that route. They don't have the Earth Spirit like we were talking about. They don't have that great setup in, for the uh, early laning phase. They might want to pick up something like... This. Okay, they go for the Juggernaut. They go back again. for the Juggernaut as well, again. So, works really well against the Earth Spirit Realm. I like this because they still don't know what OG, OG's yeah. lanes are. Yeah. yeah, keeping it very open-ended. And Liquid does go for their safe like, and they waited a long time for it. I wasn't too sure if they would pick it, but now since they have so many different enablers for the physical damage, and now they have a little bit of stronger laning phase because of how much the Howl, of course, boosts everybody's damage. Are you surprised that wasn't uh, a second phase ban? Maybe OG's has... Maybe this is what they, they were planning for. It. That's why they yeah. picked like the Void Phoenix. Maybe they were just like, oh, we, I think we I think we have the idea of like the yeah. I, I think both teams are afraid of the Enchantress right now. They didn't necessarily respect it a lot coming into the tournament, but in the last couple matches, Enchantress has been a deciding factor in a lot of laning stages. Like against Phoenix, for example, a hero that doesn't give that much lane domination the first level or two, Enchantress provides a ton of that and can just snowball your opponents. And it also scales as well into the late game. It's a, it's another source of DPS. So with Jug in the game, um, they can't even necessarily predict where he's going to go based on player taking him, since No Tail and Miracle to swap. Yeah. So similar problem as last time for Liquid here. There's a lot of healing within their draft too, like the obvious healing ward in Sunray. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not in a position to stop those, it's like, oh my God, like we're not doing any, we're doing a lot of damage, but it's just being completely counteracted. They do have the wolves, which is quite good at killing the Jug healing ward as well. Liquid's um, right click is a lot better this game though, with Venge, uh, Wave yeah. of Terror, Slaughter, Ulti, and Lycan. All of those ores are really gonna stack up. Yeah. They're a little weak on burst, I guess, but. They have objective takers though, you know, like you're saying, like the physical damage enhancements with the Lycan as well. They can bring down towers, they can bring down the Roshan if they do win a fight. But OG does have more heavily based teamfight heroes right now at this point. Yeah. More cooldown reliant even. I think OG, what OG really needs right now is to secure their laning phase. If they can replicate what they did in game two and come out of laning stage ahead, then you then you can force Team Liquid to play at your own pace. What do you think they like for that for OG? <sighs> we were mentioning the Batrider, but it's not the most incredible versus the Vengeful Spirit. Well, since OG does have last pick, I think they're gonna they're gonna wait and see yeah. what Team Liquid picks for their mid, and then they'll decide: do we put the Juggernaut there, or do we pick something uh, more traditional that matches up well against whatever Team Liquid picks? Yeah, absolutely. They can definitely switch it up. They're leaving their draft quite open-ended. The Juggernaut can go safe lane, he can go mid. The Void can go mid, off, uh, off lane or safe lane. Leaves it open. So still an axe in here Ten for Liquid. Hmm. No, there's no way. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. No way. Doesn't really fit their lineup very well. They would have to send an axe mid, and that hero There's, is yeah. so exploitable. That's the most not liquid thing I've ever heard. <laughs> axe mid. So what are okay, they? So they go for their I, safe. I'm just trying to get for something exciting here, yeah, boys. Try, try and keep up. It's just the you know this is a pretty 
pretty straightforward liquid draft. Not yeah. really anything com out of the ordinary. Yeah. The, the significant point is that they have a support that can do something early game. Yes. If it's Beastmaster, Beastmaster is very static in his lane. He says, I need to get six as fast as possible yeah. so I can help. Venge is ready to go right away. But the problem is that Venge cannot stop Jug from spinning and killing Dragonite once Phoenix hits two or Lion does the smoking. That's the scary part here. Ooh. So they are going to go Jug mid again. Sven in the safe lane. Yeah, the Sven here really is like really it. good against the minus armor, armor from Liquid, bolsters your entire team, and, you know, this is actually pretty greedy from OG. Tricore lineup, very newbie-esque. Uh, it's, it's really up to Liquid to punish here with mm -hmm. that Earth Spirit Venge roam, roam around the map. Yep, I agree. Uh, no, OG is able to farm Ancients quite easily with uh, Sven, and also, of course, like we are commenting, the BKB versus the Lycan, once he has that book, he's able to cleave down those the book very easily. Did we do predictions, or did no, you yeah, guys we're, just we're talk? Kind of, we're, oh, we're kind okay. of wrapping up. I, I, I'm not sure which one's better. I saw a lot of value in what they did last game, and it's both drafts are so similar. Mm. Yep, I like I, I like Liquid's draft again, honestly. I'll, just, okay. I'll go with them right there. All right, nothing crazy then in uh, game number three. We're still waiting for something a bit out there. Talking about there. Let's go back to our commentary team for game number three. That's right, guys. Game three is upon us. The teams have already entered the field of battle. Let's get into it. Here we are, the team's very quick to select their heroes. Now, Gods, it, look, it's a lot of the same heroes from last game, but it feels like it's going to be a very different laning stage. There's no Darkseer, Earth Spirit. There will not be much pressure likely on this Lycan early, something that OG did do last game. So in that respect, very different. Yeah, and you can look quickly at Liquid's draft and see the same three core heroes and say, oh, it's the same kind of strategy, but the dynamic of this game is completely different when they've got a strong dual support duo. They're not running a greedy jungle. Beastmaster, they've got the Earth Spirit. They've got the early game pressure and perhaps you could say advantage coming off of this. So it does make a, a very different game for Matumba Man on the Lycan. Yeah, you're also unlikely to see a Void getting as much farm here with some pretty decent kill potential from the Earth Spirit roam, double stun from... Uh, that safe lane potentially. Uh, we'll see where they opt to send the arrows. For now, Slaughter is going top, so if the air spear comes in, they may at least be able to, if not kill the void, zone him out a bit, and unlikely to see that early egg. So the Venge swap comes into play as an answer to the Chrono, something we did not see last game. Liquid, they really didn't have an answer for it his bottom lane. Moon is going to get gone on, finds himself in the middle of four heroes, and he time walks it all off. All right. Well, and he even gets the bounty rune, so a, a clean sweep there for him, and OG. Oh, off to the races already. Moon's one of those players. He he kind of knows the limits of his hero most of the time. More often than not, he'll get away with some of those cheeky plays. Yeah, if you're forcing out the howl early, not generally the biggest yeah. deal, but may mean you don't have it for this first wave and thus Fada may be off to a slower start. We'll see it, the insta jungle rotation from Mind Control Slider, so he doesn't even want to attempt to go to lane against the Lion's zoning potential, as well as the Phoenix, who you never really know if he's going to show up but the, to lane or not. The pressure on Moon is definitely there, and already the time walk getting forced out bottom. So you can see the Void is not going to have an easy time in the lane. Yeah. As long as Liquid are willing to commit three, Matumba Man should essentially free farm. Sven will free farm as well. So we're going to see trades all over the map. And they recognize Moon doesn't have the Iron Talon, so he can't really go right into the jungle just yet, at least not easily. They actually dropped two wards here to block that pole camp, so this is their way of trying to get Moon a good start, Gods, is make it very difficult for Liquid to, to, to deward this camp and thus to get the pulls going. He's gonna roll on Moon, and he will again time walk away. So, wasting three supports time while flying Miracle set up mid. Fada is rather low here. Could see it go on the Dragon Knight, potentially. Yeah, Fly also just wants to be in a position where he can snipe a courier, but you kind of know this Phoenix is completely freed up to roam around the map. Oh, once this you is a big dive by Miracle. Ring around the, rose, the roses here. And he hit the dive slope. Very dangerous. That's risky. You whiff that, and you're likely giving up a kill, and Fada has yet to take the third skill point. Now we'll grab the double breathe fire, but was saving one for a moment. Could have gone into the Dragon Tail, and... In instantly gotten the counter kill. Yeah, Moon does a good job to actually get the creep wave to his tower. Are they going to be able to deward this is really the question right now for Liquid. They have some sentries on the Venge too, but yep. need to hit both. Mind Control gets the bounty rune and likely Kuro's going to come back, realize his pool camp's blocked and start looking to deward, but he won't expect the second observer ward there, so until we reach the three minute mark, it's very unlikely Kuro will actually deward this. 
it's a, it's a pretty big investment, even committing the Observer Ward as well. If it gets dewarded early, your vision game is lacking in the laning stage, but Moon playing with Jerax here bottom. They've even, they were thinking about bringing the Slardar. He moved towards the lane, as you can see Fly tracking that courier. Is he going to go for a deep dive on it? Uh, not that deep. But uh, he knows that in the Phoenix Curious Knife's been done so many times. It was actually Jerax who first uh, pulled that out in the Grand Finals, and he's not going to get an opportunity to go for it. Again, Moon bottom lane being kind of initiated on, but... I mean, I, I would almost call it a dual lane because of that ward. <laughs> they just, they can't take advantage of having the tri-lane and just deny him experience, keep the creepy glue room back, instead two supports have to commit. Yeah, they have the side camp, but if you're pulling that side camp, it means Moon's going to likely come in, get some XP, and it's just not really controlling the equilibrium as well as you'd like. And now Kuro's going to find out it's still blocked. He's going to have to commit another sentry, or he's just going to start getting confused here. All right, let's see. Which way Kuro guesses? Will he get this one? He's thinking about it. And he's thinking about it. He thinks some more. <laughs> Where could it be? Where could it be? Just making sure that he knows that his current sentry hasn't deward, uh, isn't in range to deward it, and he opts not to drop it in the end. Stumped. Perhaps he is flummoxed. Yeah, I don't know if he thinks like a, a creep or someone came in. It's being pinged now. You can see actually it's Jerex who pings the spot like, hey, look, dude, your sentry doesn't see everything. And there we go. Kuro's done it. Woo! Gets the D ward off. But it's already done its job. Uh, it's a good D ward by Kuro. They'll get it before the four minute mark, but still Moon. It's gotten those critical early levels on the void. Level three. So he'll be much more relevant as this game moves along. And both cores here farming well. We do see Miracle again pulling out to an advantage in the mid lane. And it goes back maybe a little bit to that Lycan using Hal early, especially to the bounty rune uh, being snatched away from the bottom. But Miracle's been able to get the upper hand. It's a 10 CS lead versus the Dragon Knight. And top lane, the pressure on the T1 tower. Something Moon has kept his T1 tower completely healthy. And meanwhile, Liquid ditching this top lane has set No-Tail up to get a good chunk of damage out. The Siege Creep's there as well, so they may actually be able to completely take this one down. Kuro just wants to leech some XP, but we don't mind giving a bit of XP to Avenge if you actually get this Tier 1 tower. Let's see if they do. The tower very low. They can sun right here and try to zone heroes back. For now, the Warcry gets popped, and OG move in. Best case scenario, you try to get this denied. They're running in Earth Spirit as well. The last hit goes to crit. Big last hit there from a little lion, but a heart of steel. I think that TP was just trying to scare them back to get a tower tonight. It's worth wasting a TP if you secure a tower tonight off of it, but OG, they back off everyone except the range hero of Crit, who suddenly has 1,100 gold. He started with boots, with Fly buying all the wards, and we're going to see an incredibly fast blink yes. if that's the choice. And he's been just jungling to the extent where he can just chain pull through his uh, own side of the map, and he's already got 13 CS. So. And it seems like a game where they may need it, too, is they don't have an Earth Spirit a hero who can just initiate basically for free. Uh, only the Void, and it's an offlane Void at that. Maybe Sven can get an early blink, but it, it's a game where they need a faster Lion blink, ideally. And it looks like they're on track to get it. Yeah, the one here who was struggling was Fly getting XP. He's camped mid for so long that he was level one, like four or five minutes in the game. But he's starting to come back and recognize that he needs to get some levels now. You can always catch up a bit later with the tomb, but more importantly, there's no rush to get his level six. If anything, a crit level six early on is more influential. So Team Liquid. It's getting good levels here on Mind Control. He has just cracked level 5, but you compare that to the Void even there, and they find themselves down over 1,500 gold, about 1,000 experience as well with the Iron Talent Jungler, albeit not as fast as the Beastmaster. Moon's done this while keeping the supports busy. He's done this in the lane. Slada's done this while losing his T1 tower from the jungle with an Iron Talent, so you're much happier if you're OG because of what the offlane has done as far as being disruptive. Even though Lycan's free farming, it's the fact that Earth Spirit has had zero influence on this game so far. And we also have seen stacks start to accumulate in the Dire Jungle. Two double stacks created a... No Ancients being built up just yet, but I do imagine that's something that Notel will go back and, and look to do as the game progresses. For now, sit on the Helm of Iron Will, likely the armlet coming out, and he's going to buy the last component there. So his ability to rotate into the woods is now fully online. Yeah. They can give the lane to a support. I'm even watching No-Tail walk past jungle creeps to give Crit the farm. Crit's actually getting some farm allocation over No-Tail. I think recognizing that, I mean, Sven is always going to be out of power farm. He gets the Helm of the Dominate, stacks Ancients, giving a lion like a CS hero there so he gets his blink up maybe two minutes faster is a much bigger deal than Sven getting an extra couple hundred gold. And doing it now before Liquid really start fighting and Lion has to come as bottom lane moon drops the bubble. Here comes the Sunray. 
sorry, that same rotation, but this time Jerex is there to interrupt it. Still, Moon gets the bash, and the dive through comes from Fly. They get the kill. Moon has a time walkout. The stun from Kuro not going to be good enough. They move on to Jerex. They're diving deeper for this. Mind control hanging back because he know more. He knows more reinforcements are coming. It's Miracle and No Tell. The cavalry arriving, and now Fly, oh, a bit far away from the team. Crush and dead. Gets isolated, cold from the herd, and will be picked off. And Jug left the lane, so that means Fata will get a lot of damage off. Probably take this T1 tower if OG don't respond. They're looking for a T1 tower of their own, but the mid one, much more important to take at this stage of the game. And they know the Chrono is on cooldown. So for OG, they look to split push instead. Yeah. Three heroes banging away at the tier one. They do have that Lion Blink very soon, gods. They don't have an egg yet, though. It's only level three on Fly, very underleveled on the Phoenix. And it doesn't seem like he'll be able to do anything to stop this. A lion TP with Blink Dagger, though, could be the turnaround. And crit, just 70 gold away. One more creep will do it. He gets it. And now he's got the Blink. Rotation's coming his way. He will be scattered by some Lycan Wolves. Yeah, should be able to at least buy it, even if he ends up going down. And that's exactly what Mutumba Man has in mind. Crit dropping pretty quickly Fire here. Blink. Does he have it on Quick buy? No! Still only 125 gold away. So he should get it soon, but... Generally, you are you do see Crit able to buy it. And they smoke up right up to find that kill. At this stage, OG's expecting Liquid to commit to this top tier one tower, which Matumba Man is kind of feigning that he's going for, but they quickly smoke back towards this bottom side of the map. Are they really expecting a Roshan, though? Chugs Fenwood. Not sure if they saw them go into the pit or not. The regen rune, they poke back out. They know Rosh is going on. Oh, they see how low he is, too. Phoenix dropping a ward. They do get eyes on the Earth Spirit. And they're going to look to commit to this Roshan. The healing ward's still available. Or they do they? snipe this. They're going to have dragon form soon with the level one wave of Terra. Just a casual breathe fire, but Miracle. Only his tush gets burnt. Still at full HP, and now the Lion Blink has been purchased. Quick Omni Slash brings down wow. one. Miracle starts it off with a power play here for OG. That is such and they a have good the Omni Slash. He recognizes the Earth Spirit slightly too far from his teammates and just walks into three heroes and gets a kill. This is a lot of space for Matumba Man. He's taking a tier one now, working on a tier two, but OG have committed a lot already for Roche. They want to make sure they can finish it off. Great recognition, but do they look to contest here? Mind control on the periphery. Thinking about it, but not going to go. So it's an Aegis. This time it's No-Tail who grabs it. They won't be giving it to, to Moon or to Crit. They smoke out of the pit, but the uh, Radiant sorry, Vision Miracle. makes this very obvious. If you don't see anyone walk out of the pit, you that, should know exactly what's happening. The Blink Dagger could be big gods. They still have a finger available. Oh. To they, and they, they had Vision here on Fada. I believe they saw him run towards the tree line. But they're not headed that way. They want the Lycan. They might get him too. Which way do they go? Oh, now they see him. Hex on Fada. Starts it off. Finger likely to come out here. Crit though, needing a bit of mana. His mana tank gets interrupted. He's not going to have a, cro or a finger for this fight, but they still get the Fada kill. Turning back for Kuroki, who doesn't have swap yet. He's only level four. No easy way out. They'll run him down. One more Blake. One more auto tech. They can't do it though, but a swoop in from Fly. The bird flies above, and they will find another two. Make it three. OG revving up. Crit and got down very low too. Pulling but... ahead, and still Matumba Man though, he tries to pressure top. He can't really do significant damage to this tower. And this is a hero that Liquid have gone for time and time again. They've been very successful with They love the Lycan pick, but his ability to get involved in these early clashes against a team like OG who love to pick early team fight heroes. You're talking about Phoenix, Faceless Void. You've got Miracle playing a Jug mid, going for a very active, aggressive build with the just very cheap, cost-effective items stacking up. You're looking at four, five cheap, cost-effective items across the board. Wand, Aquila, Poor Man Shield, the Bottle, as well as Phase Boots. And he'll take any fight he can get, and Lycan is just not ready to get involved. Miracle continuing to hold serve in the mid lane, but no tail. Heading back towards top, does have the Gloves of Haste. Age is still his. We're going to see completed treads now online for the spend. So keeping his farm up, balancing between fighting as well as he has been involved in three kills already. And Ancients are being stacked now. You can see Moon working on smaller camps. So a good spread of farm. OG more confident to scatter. It's Liquid who stay very clumped up together now in the mid lane. And Liquid. And perhaps we'll be looking for their rotation once they, well, their sm first smoke rotation once they can get mind controls blink up, but it's very apparent that's the plan if you're on the OG side. You see this slider keep continually going back to lanes, trying to get his CS on. You know he's trying to get that blink dagger timing, and that's something you can look to punish. And they will look to punish this tier one mid. 
Will backup come from Liquid? Doesn't appear that way. They're also moving top and they found the kill on the Slardar. So potentially getting a kill and a tower. Miracle still with Omni Slash. Are they actually going to commit on him? He's dangerous. That's a feisty jug, but they are chasing him out. The wolf is there as well. Goes for the TP. Kuro doesn't have swap. Yeah. No way to stop this. Kuro could have, if he had swap, either of those TPs could have been cancelled, but you find a Slada kill, you get out scot free. You're also taking a T1 mid for no tail. OG making all the right moves here in game number three. Getting the deep wards up too. Let's fly. Mosey's on in. Oh, Moon so looks good. to jump. This could be the combo. Let it go with the Sunray too. Miracle just waiting for the Omni Slash. Now it comes through and jumping forward. They get the stun on the Dragonite. They bring him down as well almost. Yes, sir. They sure do. A good Magnetize, but there's a nice Phoenix Egg. Makes it difficult to run in if you're Liquid. They don't have that many ranged heroes. Gods only the Venge and the Dragonite in ultimate form, so they can't really punish the Egg. Fly gets his team out scot free at least thus far. They will pop the Aegis, but well worth it. The armlet toggle during the magnetize the first time, but the nice boulder smash from Jerex will take out the Aegis from the picture. But that, that was an Aegis that was expiring in the next minute or so, so not really the biggest comeback from Liquid by any means. What a combination. OG, the deep wards, the team fight. You look at this lineup on paper, it's like, oh my god, their late game is scary, but OG showing that. It's really the early game where these heroes are shining. Right. And Charlie kind of said it, very newbies. You get this tri-core that all scale very well, but your support influence on the early to mid game has just been amazing from both Fly and I'd say more importantly, Crit with his rotations. This has just really set up OG for success. And I think more than anything has been Moon's offlane play. He was so disruptive. Earth Spirit didn't actually find any early kind of pressure on the mid lane, the top lane. He didn't roam at all. He spent his entire early game trying to zone out Moon and they didn't even successfully do that. And that comes back to the Juggernaut pick. You really can't kill the Jug in that mid lane. Not in the early game unless he's completely wasted his blade period. That's just not likely to happen. Miracle at mid. They need to get that silence initiation off if they want to go on him and... Miracle just positioned far enough back that they won't get any opportunity to, get, to go for that jump. So OG with the big ults on cooldown, taking this time to farm, but also cautious of a rotation. And Liquid making one, moving deep into the Dire Woods. You do see a Midas almost complete for Fly, just needs a little more gold for the recipe. The thing about the OG vision right now is you see enough of the jungle camps on the map is that you know when Liquid's being aggressive. You know if they've made a smoke play to your side of the map because you can scout out their Ancients as well as Secret Shop Camp as well as the big camp over in the main Radiant Jungle. So when you see no one farming in either location, it's very apparent that Liquid have come into your jungle or are making a smoke play on your side of the map. And they're being very efficient about this. They still farm. They still manage to get a stack off. Miracle stacking for no tail and probably will assist them even as well, bringing these Ancients down while also dodging the gang. Yeah. I mean, you've still have you haven't seen a hero on the map for some time. They will soon with this lane ward up top. It looks like, but if you're OG, you're like, well, let's just make sure OG don't get a jump on us. We've got Chrono now. If anything, if they come to us, we'll win a team fight with Chrono, Sunray, Supernova. So if you're Liquid, what adjustments do you make at this point? You obviously know you're down a lot. So how do you respond? You need to try and deny a lot of this OG map control that they've got from the deep observer, observer wards and you need to have successful smoke rotations. You see Kuro as well as Jerex both holding on to a smoke. This blink dagger from mind control is what they've been waiting for to get the initiations and they're going to force the issue under towers using their kind of map vision advantage up here. They've got two nice wards to cover them and they can again kind of like last game put themselves in a position to trade buildings because they push so fast using the necrobot. On the side of OG though, they do have God Strength and Tier 2 mid just being pushed in by creeps here for Liquid. So OG, perhaps they rotate there, we'll see what they want to do. Their own Tier 2 top falls and they will TP home. Looks like they don't want to give anything up for free. Liquid, they're going for it. Fada confidently moving in, feeling like they've got to start making plays, but there's the Blink stun onto Fada, the quick swap out already used up. Kuro gets hexed, Crit thinks about moving in forward, the Mana Drain comes through and Big Daddy's on the chase. Moves there, but he gets silenced, he gets controlled, they need this Chrono to win the fight. No tail working, Kuro doesn't finish him off, they lose the void, the egg's gonna be dealt with potentially, it doesn't go off. Still the Venge lives, in the trees, Miracle low, how is OG losing this fight? Just great play from Liquid, Matumba Man surviving, four heroes cleaned up, and all of it because of that Jerak silence. Eight. Clutch silence onto the void. No Chronosphere came out. Fly went for one of the 
only aggressive X we've seen him go for on Phoenix. Last game, everyone was defensive, and the only reason he places that X so aggressively is to try and suicide to save the Void. He's basically putting the egg in the middle of Liquid, saying, take me instead of our Void. Liquid said, no, 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 we'll ignore you. We're going to make sure we kill this Void. Then they approach the egg. They recognize that the one thing that was going to save that OG team fight was a Void Chronosphere. And yeah. boy, that was a great play on the silence. Yeah, good chain stun as well. They get the follow-up crush, I believe a dragon tail there towards the end, and you can see the damage output from No Tail, but he's entirely alone. If they get a chrono off, if Miracle's able to find a decent Omni Slash, the finger maybe comes a little bit sooner on a hero that's lower. It's a totally different fight. From that deficit, Liquid had to be perfect gods, and they were. I love Kuro, just 50 HP, pokes his nose out from the trees to get that last hit. I'll, I'll take that, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> That's the support tax, you know, it's like, I've been buying wards all game, guys. Like, uh, this, this is going to a good cause. But OG will be set back by a huge teamfight victory for Liquid. That's just what they needed. And suddenly, OG have to be careful about how they approach the next couple of fights. And the other big problem for OG there is they had this BKB armor on No Tail, but without like a blink dagger, he couldn't get that clean initiation at bottom. Oh, No Tail been found out here. Can they control him? The Boulder Smash patiently sent out by Jerex, trying to force the BKB. They don't even Not get coming the BKB yet. Force, OG yeah. reinforcements streaming in. They are going to look to take this fight. The Wolves chase out No Tail. Liquid still having to deal with the tier one bottom, so knowing that OG can quickly reinforce the point of attack but Liquid may just go for a slow yeah. siege. And it's OG, I mean, you commit those two buybacks, and I think necessarily to defend your high ground and deter Liquid from pushing, but suddenly that's Miracle's item progression being slowed. Having a Manta style on Jug, very important against the Earth Spirit Silence. It's Even against the amp damage. Yeah. Moon needs a Blink Dagger himself. He didn't buy back. It was just the, the Fly Phoenix who has his Midas slowed down. If he had a level 11 during that fight, it could have been a very different engagement as well. And OG looking for a movement here. They do have eyes on Fada. They're going to blink it. Hex to start it from crit. Stun comes through to follow it up. The Omni Slash committed as well. The Wolves aren't taking it. They're still in biz. No vision, but Fada gets out. The crush from Mind Control on the backside. Look for the Chrono. Moon can't find it. Still, Big Daddy. Well, he does a bit of work there getting the Dragon Knight kill together with the team. But Miracle's going to get caught on the backside. Finally, the bubble comes in together with the Supernova. OG find their combo. The egg crashes down, and Jerex will fall. A two for three, two supports and a core for one support and a core. Very close and hard fought battle there. Yeah, OG will take it, although it's not really the dream scenario when Miracle's Jug dies again. You can see he's fallen off very much from that kind of top of the end of the net worth chart. It's suddenly he's sitting on just 6.8k net worth. Yeah, uh, that's just nothing to tank the Omni Slash. They're almost getting the kill. No tail does have trouble finding a target in this fight. BKB's God Strands only really gets to hit creeps, and it feels like he does need that blink very badly. Oh, he's got the money for it now. Picks up a Hyper Stone, in fact. He's entirely relying on his team for the lockdown. And by team, it, I mean just Crit's Lion. And and Moon, I suppose, with the Chrono. I, but the positioning is tricky. It's yeah. really got to be right on the boundary for Sven to do work. That's just so unreliable. Here Liquid. comes the smoke, though. They know the Chrono's on cooldown. And they're just going to run right at the road Right, pit. and indeed. And they get no tail. BKB, is it ready? He's got it. But can he get it off? Liquid moving forward. He pops it. Gets to work. Sven is back, says no tail and they will kill the dragon knight oh, blink in three two one they've Mind got a control finger gets out. oh miracle still chasing though moon doesn't have any chrono i mean og able to take the fight there gods without the chrono without some of the big ultimates the egg was also a cooldown yeah it was I mean, it's the ideal target to have initiated get initiated on is no tail sven he's so tanky and hard to bring down once he gets the bkb off he's got the sunray healing him he's got tons of armor and sustain from the armor plus bkb and for Liquid, they just didn't have the burst damage to bring him down at the start of that fight. But Liquid, the vision, you see these wolves co constantly scouting out OG heroes, and I think Moon pigging himself almost saying, like, I think he got, yeah, he got body blocked by the wolf for a second, so he realizes what's going on. I even commit a sentry here. Unfortunately, I think it's out of range of that lane ward. And that's just one of those things which, like, kind of sets Matumba Man apart from other Lycan players, is we've seen game after game where his Lycan wolves are giving his team a huge vision advantage. Still that delicate dance and the relative vicinity of the Roshan pit does continue. Neither team wanting to move too far away. For the rating, already those towers top gone, so no real trade for them. We'll have another look at this fight. Where No-Tail gets very low, but the Sunray keeps him alive. He pops the BKB and 
At yeah. this stage, at least, gods, it's basically fights over, folks, at that point. Yeah, and he, he gets the lifesteal from the Vlads as well. Void just blinking into the middle of that, using the time dilation, is pretty much just to cover the Sven, also give him the Vlad's aura, which is more sustained. It's lifesteal as well as the bonus armor, so by that point, Liquid, they're very reliant on physical damage. You look at how they're actually killing heroes. It's the amp into Lycan attack. The DK has a tiny bit of magic damage from the Breathe Fire, but, I mean... Outside of perhaps the Magnetize, it's almost all physical damage, and that's where all these armor items for OG are going to make their draft very strong. And Notel, perhaps rushing an Assault Crest here, kind of recognizes how physical damage dependent Liquid are. The Sven pick is just incredibly powerful this game. It's only Earth Spirit that can really dish out any appreciable amount of magic damage, yeah. and there's no Veil yet for Jerex. Not even sure if it's worth getting one if it's only him who benefits. But they may need that alternative source of damage. No tail with the max war cry. He'll be giving his team 25 armor once the AC is up. And you can't reliably initiate on No Tail and say, let's just kill him before he war cries, before he BKBs, because he has the sun racing behind him. He potentially has a healing ward as well. Something OG often have is just this sustain on their side. Very rarely do you see them draft with a draft from OG where they just have at least one hero with some kind of heal. This one is the sun rate with the healing ward. And these aren't just like you're like, oh, here's a bit of HP to heal you back up. No, this is like a huge amount of sustain from these percent based healing spells. A lot of clumping up, a lot of grouping here for both teams. They are terrified of a hero getting caught out of position because they know that instantly means a rush. The AC nearly done for OG, as well as Miracle's Manta style has the ultimate orb. Yeah. I believe the recipe coming out on the courier. So two big items, virtually done, gods. Yeah, and kind of a stage of the game where teams will just forego farming. You see all this farm up top, OG's like, we don't really want to go for this because of how important Roche is. You show one here up top and you're just giving up map advantage to Liquid. And there's no BOT hero, there's no Ember Spirit or Nature's Prophet, someone who can go push out a lane and come back, and here we go. Stand. Initiation coming through, the stand starts it off, Dragonite pops the DD rune, they do back up, Crit's been caught out of it, he gets silenced here early, but Moon's there to back him up, looking for that first target, the Wolf charges in, the Sun comes on the entire Necro army, they're gonna stun that as well, no tail committing his BKB and his God Strength to kill this off, he only gets a couple of Wolves, which can easily be resummoned, OG, looks like they may have to retreat, are There's they gonna re-engage? Still egg, you have to be very careful about chasing, uh, just because No-Tail's used everything. Uh, he, actually, he actually still has God Strength. There was only the, the okay. armlet and the yeah, BKB. Yeah. So he'll have the, the God Strength round two, but no BKB. They've got a lot of stuns on Liquid. Problem is, Miracle on the front lines has Blade 3 and Manta. Two good defensive tools. He's going to try bait with a Manta illusion. Kuro. I Creeping like this play, forward. but it's gonna... Eh, 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 okay, now eh. you know it's an illusion. Come on, guys, you know you want this illusion. <laughs> that one Necro here was like, wait a second, that just did 600 damage. What's going on here? Liquid aren't gonna fall for the trap. Fighting around the Roche pit as Liquid is. It's a Lycan ult for a Sven BKB. And now you have to walk into the pit against the Chrono Egg combo. So OG say, we don't need that Sven BKB. Chrono Egg is the Roche pit anyway. is just beastly. They have the Sentry Wards to scatter the Lycan Wolves. They even double up on the Sentry Wards. Are they gonna come? Liquid are thinking about it, streaming towards the it's pit. Hard. Wolves will guide the way. One out in front, they quickly deal with that. Kuro. I mean, this is the exact Not same team fit. fight as the previous game, with the Egg and the Chrono, the Roche Pit. This time around, Moon on the outside of the pit. And they have so few ranged heroes to kill the Egg Gods. If it's up on the high ground, who's going to really be able to deal with it? They can't get to Fly's Phoenix. He's in such good position. Caw, he shouts. Caw, and they're going to try to come in, but it's too late. Aegis grabbed again. BKB from Sven. This time it is with the God Strait. Just choose Miracle to bits and instantly Liquid, who didn't want to give away a free Roche, give up an additional kill and still have to back. Kind of the, the idea from Liquid is to initiate with the silence on Phoenix as your Slada blinked into the pit with the crush, but they were there about five seconds too late and the follow-up for the Slada just takes too long to get it into that Roche pit. It's like, in a way, it's it's like four melee heroes for Liquid with the Dragonite ult not always up, the bench having relatively low rage, the Phoenix pick it's not like it's a surprise that OG went for it, but it is no. a big problem at this stage. And there's really no ranged DPS of any sort, nothing to actually... You can't hit the egg reliably with Avenge, so... The BKB Dragonite, perhaps, all you can rely on, and we're talking about a BKB that hasn't even been completed for Fata, so... They desperately need to finish his BKB before they can fight into OG. And, and no. OG's high ground siege with Sven, BKB, and Jug is Way better scary. than last game. Yeah. Way easier with the Sven in front than it is with the, the likes of a Void or a Jug. So durable, as the Phoenix Sunray really benefits from the, the heal 
as a strength hero. So Liquid will give up the tier two. And OG find themselves in the lead. But Liquid is still held on to Rax for now. The farm will continue. Is there anything that Liquid is lacking that you feel would really change this game? You mentioned they're very reliant on physical damage. It seems like OG have the answers for that. They have trouble bursting a tanky core like the Sven. What what are they lacking? They need a way to rely to be able to get off their physical damage, which I think comes largely from Fata having BKB. They look for a pick at top, but the TP out miracle escapes. But there's no one major item that's going to change the state of this game. Even the BK, the BKB on Dragonite at best gives him a tool that he can pop to take out the supernova. But even then, you're relying on not getting caught by a Moon Chronosphere. Jarex does get a good ward down here. He's been, but Fly knows yeah. they're in the neighborhood. He blinked, oh, crit blinking back, but he gets swapped forward. He oh. manages to force that away. Then the bubble. Liquid completely caught out. Mind control down. Kuro decapitated. Crit is showing up. It's not the first time here in Manila. It might not be the last Fada on the run. This little lion has some legs. He's looking for the jump. Does he find anyone? Moon even pursuing into the south. Miracle will give up the chase. My right. God! If you were told everyone <laughs> talks about Miracle, yeah. we should be talking even more about Chris. And you were told there was a 9k MMR player in this team, and you you didn't know who who anything about Dota. You'd probably be saying it's this lion. This lion has been the big playmaker, and we're not just talking about that play there. Throughout this tournament, Crit has made the big plays. His Earth Spirit has been absolutely incredible against Newbie. Here in this best of five so far, he's been the big playmaker for this team, and we saw it last game on his Earth Spirit. We've seen crit really step up when og have needed it and they're suddenly finding themselves poised to strike looks like og might get contested here they want to engage mind control getting the two here crushed but can actually focus crit down but tumba man's in deep but tumba man is back home in the well and crit still lives they're committing so much and they, they get nothing no two cores Fata. down a finger from right into the rear of fada and he tries to turn tail he has the armlet can he toggle it no the phoenix damage over time affect him he gets the armlet back on but still sliced up and spit out and can they even get the crit kill they swap him back in they hate the little bugger but og are happy to accept the sacrifice a four for one not worth it at <laughs> all. I mean, it feels good to kill Crit after he's been styling on you all game, but for OG, that's the least important hero as far as their high ground push goes. They've got the heal and sustain from the Phoenix. They've got the DPS coming out from the three cores with the Vlads, and this is looking like a melee rack soon to fall. With a win here, OG would have Liquid on match point the rest of the series. The green dream within their grasp. Never has a team before won two Valve events. They could be the first. Bro, OG, they've got all the tools to kind of scale into the late game now as well. They're in no rush to end things, even with an Aegis on their side. It's expiring in 30 seconds time, and I imagine they'll have flashbacks to last game where Miracle's Aegis expired right before he went down and trying to avoid a similar scenario. So they'll fall back, probably pick up the next item or two. Oh, Wait out for some of these ultimates. No tell himself, not in fighting shape right now. Yeah, they do have a big pickup here. Moon grabbing the Aghanim Scepter. You may have the swap, and in theory it's an answer to the Chrono, but so often we've just seen OG, they don't really need the Chrono to take a, a pick off. They just use it for follow-up kills. Oh, Miracle. The Assassin, but he's locked into a sentry. Can they focus him down? Miracle manages to get up the man, so he pops the Omni Slash. He may still die here as he mostly bounces the creeps and... Liquid 10-5 just to be safe. Mind control is just like, if I die here, I, I, I'm just I'm uninstalling Dota. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Delete that Dota. <laughs> There's no way that Omni Slash should have been able to follow him, but... I mean, worth going for it anyway. By the time you respawn, you'll yeah. pretty much have a backup. Not a, not a bad use of the Omni Slash, but... It just shows you how badly OG have to screw up to give away kills, though. Liquid needing those mistakes. It wasn't even the biggest bounty for Liquid to pick up. It's behind 20k gold, but they still only got 460 for the actual bounty itself onto Matumba Man's Lycan. Does have a completed AC off of that kill though, so that makes a, a decent difference for him. OG holding the high ground here with a ward down in the lane, just praying Drop for Liquid it. to come in. They throw out the wave of terror up high. They are suspicious that OG lurks, and they were right. Oh boy. Alright, I think he's living up to a Big Daddy as a name right now. Daedalus complete. Motel is definitely packing some heat. I don't think you want to go near this Sven. 
The problem is, they might force you to. Yes. They have the, the one minute cooldown chrono. They can blow it for solo kills, no problem. If you swap to save someone from a Sven, then that's when the, the Void Chrono comes online. And Sven will take his free bench kill. <laughs> like, that is a guaranteed kill at that point. I mean, you lose so, such a minor amount of damage from the Vengeance Aura. You're just like, okay, I've got Vengeance Aura on me. It doesn't matter. Oh, I gee. still hit like a truck. Going for the deep jungle invasion here. Getting Whoa. positioning and finding Jerax. Farming that top lane. The freebie. Wrapping around from the south. Crit says, I'm the real Earth Spirit, Bubba. You ain't got nothing on me. And he'll get the kill as well. Buys the gem afterwards. <laughs> Fortunately, you don't drop that. Liquid in a good position to force OG back, so it's a pretty inconsequential loss for Liquid, assuming they get out of this. Do they, though? Oh. Why? Oh, dead off the start, but the bubble comes in. Where's the backup for Moon? It's rather far away. Crit's there. He lays in the stun to follow this up. They still don't have the full complement of heroes engaging. No till now, Rise. Oh my goodness! Almost instantly gives two more. Oh gee, they don't need the Phoenix. They don't need the big wombo combo. Just throw a spell down whenever you have it. Collect your bounties anyway. I mean, they were in the position to force Lick to force OG back to defend, and OG says, "Sure, we'll oblige. We'll come defend. We'll take the fight against you." They're 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 feeling like they're just way too far behind, gods. This is what this is what Sven's meant to do. We saw this hero kind of played a decent amount at the Shanghai Major here in Manila. It hasn't had the best success, but No Tail is reminding people how Sven can fit perfectly into a draft and has played it out of his mind here. Yeah, it's something that has really made the difference for OG. No Tail has had a bit of a shaky showing, particularly like you look a month or two back at the Shanghai Major, but he is stepping up here on the big stage in Manila. Yeah, I don't think there's been a few games where it's like Miracle hasn't looked like that 9k MMR prodigy that everyone talks about him being, but No Tail, like, no real poor games come to mind. This guy has been rock solid and just put his team on his back when he's needed to. The Naga Siren game comes to mind here on the Sven. He's delivered as well. But really with OG, I mean, it's been a true team performance here. They have such strong coordination around the Chronosphere, the Sunray, and Liquid uh, really on the back foot now. Down the lane of Rax, potentially going to be having to defend high ground against another Aegis push coming out from OG if they don't contest this next Roshan. OG starting to assemble in the mid lane, in the trees, Liquid hanging back near their Ancients. There's a Solar Crest complete, a little bit of evasion. Could make a slight difference against the Sven, yeah. but at the rate he's farming. It just helps if you're... Lycan Might even have or... money for an MKB soon. Yeah, if you're Lycan or DK gets jumped on by that Sven initiation, these heroes who normally tanky and do have a lot of armor, they get a bit more armor as well as the evasion, so... I like the pickup from Kuro, but... Whether or not it's going to change an outcome of a fight remains to be seen. Well, it's a ray of light and a sea of darkness for Liquid, really, but they'll, they'll take that ray of light. And they, they find a new home here. It's up in the, the dire woods, just occupying the jungle for now. A minute to go until the Roche respawn. Again, the careful scouting with Manta, Illusions, and Wolves trading sides, gaining vision. It's Liquid who scramble away first. They're driven out of the woods. Sent home a bit. There's a miracle confidently way out there. And this he does be... blend up blinking back though. And for OG, you must be wary of this. You see no one defending bottom just yet. Now the TPs come out and you'll realize Liquid have retreated out of your jungle. And that's kind of signal for OG to perhaps go aggressive, start pushing out some of these lanes. It's almost a max respawn rush though, gods. So they know it's coming soon and they are hanging around near the pit. Yeah, and that's why they're not even trying to push out this top lane right now because they are very wary that Roche should be coming up any second now, but they still got this T1 bottom tower, so if there's a fight around the rush, even if Liquid get off an amazing initiation, the buyback TP potential is there. Do you, so do you fight Rosh if you're Liquid? Like, do you try to fight into the pit with the egg on the high ground? Now a Shiva's guard up as well. I think the answer is just absolutely not. It's, to me, maybe it's a, a last ditch effort play just because you feel you're too far behind, but I don't see a scenario where Liquid can get a good fight around this Rosh pit against the Chrono Supernova and the items you just mentioned, the Shiva's guard among other things. Well, they have to make their decision in about five seconds, and it's already too late. Yeah. OG will take the Roche. With that comes an Aegis, as well as a Cheese, and likely round two of the Siege. And they're smoking up around that max Roche respawn timer, so Liquid must be wary that there's a good chance Roche is going on, but 
This smoke perhaps sets up for a pickoff on top lane. Since OG, after, often after taking a Roche, you make a beeline for bottom. Your tier 3 tower at bottom isn't being defended. This is a big telltale sign that Liquid's up Kuro to something. smoked up. Here comes the jump from behind. They came. It's Liquid. First man in, but no tell. Alive, he's in the chrono, but he's healthy for now. Kuro on his own, trying to bring him down. He pops the BKB. He does die rather quickly. The Sven hits the deck. He's got to buy back. They don't have their biggest damage dealer. It's about as good as it's gonna get with two falling and still in round two no tail able to chop some wood here makes it two for three just slot limited gods didn't have room for the ages or the cheese and just barely walked into the chrono it looked like there yeah importantly fly kind of got his sunray taken out of the equation as well a amazing chronosphere by moon yeah you catch the spend but you've got to do anything to try save him there and set fly up to get the Sunray off, but it was cancelled in. But now there's no Dragon form, there's oh, yeah. no Wolf form for 25. Nice. Your Chrono will be back up because there's an Agonims in 10 seconds. So they say, screw it, let's buy back, let's go high ground anyway. And you're not too scared about pushing, even with Sven having no buyback. He's got a BKB in 5. He's uh, not going to be on the front line next to Miracle, very likely, if the, the Lycan and DK are back alive. But right now it's a 5v4 scenario and OG. Ready to take their second lane of Rax, doing it very cautiously, just with Miracle alone on the high ground. They back off after the range Rex here, respecting the respawn of the Dragon Knight as well as the shapeshift coming back online. Are we going to see another smoke back from OG? They definitely can. They've got Chrono now on Moon. Crit moving towards the team to rejoin them. The f smoke does get purchased. Crit's coming back with the cheese. I wonder if he passes this along to someone like no tell you mentioned slot limited perhaps considers replacing a blink dagger but the blink is just so good to follow up like a lion initiation either that or just baits his team really hard which yeah. is definitely an option if you're no tell they have aegis and cheese on uh, other heroes right now so we'll see what the choice is miracle the man out in front he could just see just melee rex using his manta style and the blade fury blink dagger he might look for a blink omni slash here to kick it off let's see no, uh, just the blade fury on the creeps and okay. Wolves guarding the door. OG looking to break it down. Can't really commit onto this Juggernaut when he's got the Aegis as well as the Manta to get out of silence. Can they hold the line, Liquid? Even in doing so though, they're not farming. They're not really accessing late game. They're still down 25,000 and they just lost a ranged Rex. Three buybacks on the Radiant. The Dire with two as well as an Aegis and a Cheese. Slow and steady. No overcommitment from OG. They don't want to risk too much. They're just waiting for that top lane to shove in. And someone's going to have to go defend it soon. Yeah, the patience from Miracle just as he slowly pushes and sieges this high ground. Hasn't actually done any damage to this melee Rax yet, but with two minutes on this age, I imagine they will commit soon. They're waiting on top, it looks like. Now that the lane has arrived, someone has to deal with it. That's the Dragon Knight, and... Okay, they just say, you know what, let's just wait entirely. New item will be purchased, so Juggernaut okay. spending virtually all his gold. Miracle gonna buy an Ice Scotty. Makes him even a safer siege engine. Yeah. No this rush for OG. I mean, they, they don't really need to, do they? They've got a minute and a half on Aegis, and the Skadi gives them a ton of extra sustain for this high ground push. So I think the Skadi was actually what they were waiting for before committing to the high ground push. And Along get... with two lives here and a lot of sustain. Yeah. Liquid, the fight of their lives in game number three. A loss here. And They'll be one game away from losing the series the rest of the way and here comes that long-awaited smoke no tail creeping in miracle on front just they need that one second of jump and he blinks he gets the stun off it's on Kuro who doesn't have buyback to kill that vangelf rather quickly he does now matamba man trapped in the corner along with vada two huge cores quit dropping the stun maybe a little bit early but it's enough damage with the egg to force matamba back to drive vada away they can focus on rex they say screw it let's kill heroes instead the egg pops out and round two of the fight continues with the healing ward Along with the Sunray bringing Miracle back to full HP, they can continue to sustain this push here. OG just unchecked and unrivaled in this siege, still have an Aegis on Miracle. Liquid have bought back with two transformation heroes. They have no Dragon Ball, no Jake Jits, and he goes no tail. On the Matamba Man looking for more. Can they bring him down? Locked in and controlled and dipped back to the well. Liquid have nothing left. They tap out.
And again getting all of their signature heroes, and again, OG with the answers. Yeah. I mean, you're, what do you do? You're trying to defend high ground and rely on those buybacks, but a buyback on a Dragonite, a Lycan, when you don't have those ultimates, is suddenly a buyback that's not really amounting to too much. OG just took control early, used their team fight, crits early, blink dagger pickup on the Lion, finding kill after kill for this team, and OG, game three goes their way. What do you do? You.